things I do for film. Whew. Hi, my name's Matt Grimshaw. Welcome to Namibia. That's me, traveling, adventuring, and looking at rocks in some of the most fascinating places in the world. Back then, it was all about exploring and having a good time. Now I'm a dad, a bit older, and I've come to realize there's a lot more to it. I'm Matt Grimshaw, and exploration geology has taken me to some fascinating places. This time, I'm in Namibia, at the southern tip of Africa, the most sparsely populated country on the continent, famous for its breathtaking landscapes and wildlife. But the country's history is deeply linked to the mining industry, and I want to understand what that means today. To my fellow Africans, if we don't have a plan, someone will make a plan for you. So here we have the US Africa Summit, we have the Australia Africa Summit, the Chinese have a strategy for us, the Russians have a strategy. Everyone has a plan for us. What's our plan for them? I'm in Namibia to attend the annual conference of the Society of Economic Geologists. This global gathering brings together geologists from academia and industry to explore the world's mineral deposits. The first time the event was held in Africa, highlighting the continent's vital role in the future of mineral resources. While I was in the country, I wanted to get out and understand what mining looks like what it means to the people of Namibia. Asking that through yourselves and your networks, scientists or engineers, please be the front and center of attracting the best explorers and mine developers and the best people to work who respect our culture, our environment and our social matters. Mining has shaped the history of Namibia, from archeological evidence of copper smelting, through the exploitation of the colonial era, to the modern industry, that drives much of the country's economy today. When German colonists arrived in the late 19th century, they saw the potential of this mineral-rich land. What followed was a brutal period of exploitation and genocide as indigenous communities were displaced and forced into labor. The discovery of diamonds sparked a minerals rush that cemented the importance of Namibia's mineral wealth. More recently, mining in the country has been defined by uranium, diamonds, tin, and gold. And now, as the world searches for critical minerals to power their energy transition, Namibia once again finds itself at the centre of global attention. What does this next phase of resource extraction mean for the country, its landscapes and its people? I only had a limited window in Namibia, so I couldn't see everything. One place I did manage to visit was the Ochakoto gold mine operated by B2 Gold, one of the country's more modern gold operations. The mine has been in production for just over a decade and is Namibia's largest gold producer. Now, after a period of extraction, the mine is nearing the end of its life. So, as an exploration geologist, uh, I, I tend to not really see this end of the mineral value chain. This is kind of where the action happens. So, if done responsibly and safely, you know, some of the impacts can be balanced. But ultimately, you are still digging a big hole in the ground. So, lots of challenges to be faced. I told the open pit, processing plant where the gold is extracted and I was shown the solar farm that has drastically reduced the mine's reliance on fossil fuels. We're currently here on the nature reserve which is just an incredible facility it's amazing it's, it's a beautiful place we've been put up and hosted really well but one of the things that I'm really keen to understand is how projects going forward can embed some of this kind of stuff from day one. So the solar plant we visited, the game reserve here, how can all of that be embedded in projects from day one rather than retrofitting it later down the line. The next day I had the chance to see some of the remediation sites B2 Gold are working on. My name is Mia. I am the Environmental Research and Rehabilitation Coordinator within the Environmental Department. Okay, so currently we're standing here at that little dot there. And this is our entire coverage of the waste rock dump. So from the dumping process, the profiling and sloping to an angle of about 17 degrees in a concave shape. So that helps us just to control erosion and to create a more stable slope that is easy to work on. And then we move in and plant trees. So the little trees that you see in the background, those come from our rehabilitation nursery. And then we plant those to a density of 140 uh, trees per hectare. I would like to believe we are sort of leading 
in terms of initiatives and efforts to actually uh, correct the damage that um, we've we've created with mining. What does it mean to you yourself being involved in mining as a Namibian? Uh, personally, it it means a lot uh, because I think years back before I got into conservation and resource management, I used to think mining was the most destructive thing that could ever happen. But then I got into uh, resource management and conservation and I got an understanding that if it's done right and we balance uh, the economics, the people and the environment, we can be able to do it well. And I think that's one of the things that B2 Gold constantly strives to do. Last up on the tour was to visit Jeremy, who runs the rehabilitation nursery. Little did I know, this was one of the highlights of the trip. Well, welcome to the farm. This is Eridsdorf Farm, a farm that was purchased initially for exploration on gold. So these are the indi different indigenous uh, plants that uh, we are growing. Um, here you can see they're grown in these uh, five liter pots. Here are the little new shoots developing. And uh, yeah, so these will grow into 20, 30 foot acacias they hold the soil so it really um, helps to contain uh, soil erosion on the slopes across at the mine. So these are plantation crops which we are doing field trials on. A lot of these plants have never been grown here so we've got oranges, limes, lemons, mandarins and grapefruit. You have a very very well run port being Welvis Bay and on exports, Namibia, with its latitude, can be six weeks ahead of South Africa on exports of all these fruits into the Northern Hemisphere. Mining is a short-term part and a long-term prosperity of the land. So how do I go about exploring and looking at the land with that long-term value creation? Yeah, you know, for me personally, um, you know, the, the mine or B2 Gold is leaving an incredible legacy and it will be here for generations. So it's a great legacy for the mine in that uh, it's a producer or a commercial agricultural producer employing a lot of people. So where we're going now was virgin land um, four years ago. And so it's been cleared and developed into a productive uh, commercial uh, agricultural entity. Um, it's now self-financing and uh, it's going a long way to address the food insecurity of, of the country. Oh, it smells. Beautiful smell. Good. Yeah. yeah, so welcome. This is the uh, wheat uh, that's been produced. It is a, a variety uh, out of South Africa. It's the first year that we've grown it. I've done a lot of field trials with different varieties. We're able to produce two crops a year, uh, wheat in winter and maize in summer. So it's extremely lucrative. Um, it's doing very, very well. The wheat in its development is what we call uh, the milky dough stage. So those are the seeds there. And uh, if we take them out like that and press them, you'll see that white liquid coming out. And that's all the, the starch, the gluten, everything else that is in, in wheat. We're very fortunate to find some water here and some pretty uh average soil and um yeah with the two the water and the soil we've been able to develop this and uh, we're hoping that this can be replicated across the country where there is water so for agricultural development going forward uh, it holds huge opportunity Jeremy's farm was a haven, jarring contrast to the mining operations just around the corner. Surrounded by greenery and vibrant plants, felt like an oasis in this industrial landscape. We'd expected just to see some plants being grown for the waste rock dumps, but what stood out was the forward-thinking vision to invest in new farming methods that would go far beyond the gold in the ground. It's a great example of how the wealth from minerals, if invested wisely, can really create a lasting value. However, Many of the impacts of these initiatives are constrained to the mine. Next time, on the road, try and understand what the mine means to the local people.